How to create an SQL database using PHP My Admin. There's two ways to create a database in PHP My Admin. The first way is going to work in your locally hosted web server such as WAMP, AMPS. The second way is going to work specifically if you're using a shared hosting service. So first I'm going to start by creating a database in my locally hosted WAMP server. Again, this will work in any locally hosted web environment and it will also work if you have a dedicated server. We're going to go ahead and click on our WAMP icon here and then we're going to navigate to PHP my admin like so it's going to open that page in our web browser now on the left you can see all the databases that i already have in here what we want to do to create a brand new database is navigate to the top navigation bar where it says databases and click on that. Now for this video, I'm just gonna call this database a video. You don't need to mess with this value here unless you're dealing with some kind of advanced data. So just leave that to the default and then go ahead and click create. This is going to create your database and you can see that on the left side navigation here where it says a video. Now it's gonna take you to the page to create a table. As you guys can see, it's giving us the message that says no tables found in the database. So we need to create one here. We're just gonna call this trial and we're gonna leave it to four columns for this video, but you can increase this or decrease it to whatever you guys want then go ahead and click create. That's gonna run the SQL to actually create this table. You guys can see that that table was created because at the top, it will state your table name here. And what this page is going to do is it's going to let you add columns to that particular table within your database. So in our case, we want the first column to be first name, the second column to be last name, the third to be phone and the fourth to be email. You can change these values right here underneath where it says type to anything you guys want. In our case, we're just going to leave them as varchar values because we just want the user to enter anything they need to enter here. Next, the length slash value column here is going to set a maximum amount of characters on this particular column. So for example, the first name cannot be more than 20 characters if I have it set to 20 here. So it can be anything between zero to 20 characters and you guys can customize this to whatever you want. Default, you're not gonna have to change this most of the time. You can set it to null or current timestamp for now. We don't want any of that. Collation, you don't need to manipulate any of this unless you're dealing with more advanced data and we'll get into that later on in another video. Attributes, again, this is gonna be for more advanced data which we don't need to worry about right now. Next, it's gonna give you the option if you want this field to be able to have null values, you can click that for us. We don't want any of these values to be able to take a null value. So we're going to leave that unchecked index. You can change this to primary, unique index, full text and spatial. If you want this field to auto increment. So if you have maybe like order ID and you want to just have it auto increment, you can go ahead and click this option here. What that will do is it will automatically change that to your primary key here. For now, we don't want to worry about any of that. So we're going to go ahead and change all of this back. And when you're done setting all the restrictions and all the parameters for your columns within your table, you want to go scroll down to where it says save and then go ahead and click that. This is going to run the SQL to create all these columns within your table and you guys can see that no index defined no partitioning defined we don't need to worry about that right now because we only have one table within our database so it's not that big of a deal and from here it's going to show you guys the structure of this table so it will let you delete fields from here you can check all drop all of them right within here. You can drop one at a time, you can change them, or if you click more, you can change your primary key, unique key, if you wanna go ahead and do that. And it will give you a few more options as well. For now, we have everything the way we want it. So what we wanna do is go back to where it says browse. Now in browse, you can see that it automatically runs select all from our trial table. And as you guys can see, it's just showing our table columns here because we don't actually have 
have anything within that table yet. It's simply empty. So to actually start adding something to this table, I do have a video showing you guys how to do that with PHP on your website. If you wanna check that out, I'll leave a link up top and down below. But within PHP My Admin, if you wanna add information to this database, what you can do is navigate to the top to where it says SQL, and then you can go down here and it will give you the option to select all, select just one here, and it will automatically write up information from your table. And then what we wanna do is hit insert, and this will write up all of our fields automatically and it will preset our values here. So all we have to do is change our values. So for the first name, we'll set it to John. For the last name, we'll set it to Smith. For the phone number, I'll just enter something completely random. It doesn't even need to be right for now. And then for the email, we'll just set it to john at, at gmail.com like so. And keep in mind, you can also select update and delete down here, and then you can clear format. For now, we don't need to worry about any of that. But once you have everything set up here in your SQL query, you can just go ahead and select go, and it will automatically run that. And if it runs successfully, it will give you the green check mark. Now, if we go back to our browse column, you guys will be able to see that we can see our table data right here. You can add as much table data as you need to this database. The last thing I wanna show you guys is if you click on your table again here in the left side navigation, you can completely drop this table here if you don't want it anymore, or you can insert more, you can change the structure of it, whatever you need to do. Now, if we go all the way back to our homepage by clicking this top button here, what we can do is navigate to databases, and then let's say we wanna delete that database, which in our case we do, because we don't need this, it's just an example. We can go down here and select our video database, and then just go ahead and hit drop, and it will ask you if you're sure. Now keep in mind, dropping this will permanently destroy your database, so you never wanna do this if you have a database with important information, but in our case, it's just an example, so we don't need to be worried about it. But before you do do this drop, you wanna make sure that you only have the database you want to drop selected. Now we'll go ahead and hit drop again, and we'll get rid of that database. Now it gave me an error message, but that's fine. It did in fact delete my video database. You guys can see that because it doesn't exist here. And then on our left side navigation, it doesn't exist either. So the next way to add a database using PHP My Admin is going to be in your shared hosting service. So what you want to do is navigate to your shared hosting service. And keep in mind, I'm going to be using HostGator for this example, but all of them are pretty much exactly the same, whether you're using HostGator, Hostinger, Bluehost, or another shared hosting service out there. So what you wanna do once you log into your shared hosting service is find wherever it says cPanel and then go ahead and click on that. Once we get to the cPanel, you're gonna know that you have a shared hosting service if it says shared IP address here. So that is going to mean that obviously you have a shared hosting service. From your cPanel, you wanna navigate down to where it says PHP My Admin and we're gonna start off in this page. It will redirect you. And now, as you guys can see, if we click on databases, it's gonna show us our databases, but it's not going to let us create a database in here like it did in our locally hosted server or if we have our own dedicated server. So in this case, it's not letting us create our own database directly through PHP My Admin because it is a shared hosting service. It forces you to do it through your cPanel here. So if we go back to the cPanel, right next to PHP I, My Admin, it's going to say MySQL Databases. Click on that, and here is where it will let you create a new database. Again, depending on what hosting service you're using, this might look a little bit different, but all the information is going to be the same. And since you're using a shared hosting service, it's going to force you to have your user ID at the front like this. And if you wanna see that user ID, you can go back to your cPanel like so, and then it will show your user ID right here underneath where it says current user. So it's adding this text to the front of our database name. So anything that I type after this 
will specify that particular database. So for this example, I wanna name this our video database again. And once I hit create, it will in fact create our database. And then we wanna go back and take a look at that. So in my case, my database name is gonna be Thomas K1 underscore video, but in your case, it will be whatever your user ID is underscore, and then whatever you typed in to the field up here like so. Now, once you create the database here, you wanna go back to PHP My Admin. And from there, it's gonna let you start changing things. So now if we go back to cPanel, scroll back down to where it says PHP My Admin, we're gonna click on that and then it will redirect you again. On the left side, we're gonna expand this right here. Then we're gonna navigate down to the new database that we just created. And from here, it will let you create a table within this video database. So it gets a little bit confusing when you're using a shared hosting service versus using your locally hosted server or your own dedicated server. So in this case, we're just gonna name this our trial table again, and then specify our columns of four here. And then from here, it's going to be exactly the same as what I showed you guys for your locally hosted server or if you have a dedicated server. But I wanted to show you guys the differences between the two because it depends on what kind of server you're creating this database in, if you're using a shared hosting service or if you're using the other types I talked about already. If this doesn't make sense, let us know down in the comments or go to our website at commonwebdesign.com and we will help you guys out. Thanks for watching.